When you hear the name Velociraptor, what pops into your mind? A terrifying nine feet long predator with razor sharp claws, hunting in packs, and taking down prey with ease? You're probably picturing the clever, fearsome killers from Jurassic Park, right? That image has been burned into our collective imagination for decades. But hold on, what if I told you that the real Velociraptor was far from the nightmare Hollywood sold us? Yeah, you heard that right. Velociraptor, the so-called terrifying predator, was actually more like a feathered, flightless bird. Not much bigger than a turkey. Forget about it being the ultimate prehistoric killing machine. The real Velociraptor was small, scrappy, and dare I say, kind of adorable. How did we go from thinking of it as a nightmare to realizing it's closer to an oversized chicken with an attitude? Let's dig in and uncover the truth about Velociraptor. In the early 1990s, Jurassic Park stormed onto the scene and completely redefined what people thought about dinosaurs. Suddenly, Velociraptor was a household name. It was shown as a pack-hunting genius, coordinating attacks and opening doors like some prehistoric James Bond villain. And let's not forget its size. In the movie, these raptors were massive, around 6 feet tall and 12 feet long, with long, razor-sharp claws that could disembowel a T-Rex if given the chance. They were terrifyingly fast, cunning, and absolutely lethal. That was the Velociraptor we thought we knew. But the reality? It's a little less Hollywood and a lot more National Geographic. The actual Velociraptor was a whole different creature. For starters, it wasn't six feet tall. The real Velociraptor was about 1.5 feet tall at the hip and around 6.5 feet long, but most of that length came from its tail. We're talking about an animal that weighed only 15 to 30 pounds, basically the size of a turkey. A very athletic turkey, but still a turkey. And that sleek, scaly skin you saw in the movies? Nope. Velociraptor was covered in feathers. Yes, feathers. Scientists discovered quill knobs on its forearm bones, evidence of feathers that would have made it look more like a prehistoric bird than a scaly lizard. Imagine a feathered, flightless hawk sprinting across the desert, and you're closer to the truth. Now, you might be thinking, if it's just a feathery little dinosaur, was it really harmless? Well, not exactly. Velociraptor wasn't as harmless as your pet chicken. It was still a predator, and it was still armed with a terrifying weapon, the infamous sickle-shaped claw on each foot. This claw was about 2.5 inches long and razor sharp, designed for slashing at prey. But here's the kicker. It wasn't using those claws to disembowel creatures the size of humans, or even T-Rex juveniles, as the movies suggest. Instead, Velociraptor's prey was much smaller. Studies of its teeth and fossils suggest it likely hunted small animals, reptiles, and maybe even baby dinosaurs. Think of it as an opportunistic predator, scavenging and hunting whatever it could manage to catch. It wasn't the top-tier predator dominating its ecosystem, but it was clever and adaptable, traits that helped it survive. One thing Jurassic Park did get right? Velociraptor was smart. Well, smart for a dinosaur. Its brain was relatively large compared to its body size, and its intelligence likely helped it become an effective hunter. But before you start picturing it solving puzzles or plotting world domination, let's put things in perspective. Velociraptor's intelligence was probably closer to that of modern birds, like crows or parrots. These are smart animals, sure, but they're not exactly writing symphonies or solving Rubik's Cubes. So, while Velociraptor may have been a clever little predator, it wasn't quite the criminal mastermind Hollywood made it out to be. Another big misconception is the idea that Velociraptor hunted in packs. The movies show them coordinating attacks and outsmarting their prey with military precision. It's an exciting thought, nest, but the evidence just doesn't support it. Fossil records suggest Velociraptors were more likely solitary hunters. They probably scavenged for food or ambushed smaller prey on their own, while some other dromaeosaurs, Velociraptors family, might have displayed pack behavior. There's no strong evidence to suggest Velociraptor did. So, the image of a coordinated raptor strike team? It's more fiction than fact. Let's talk about that iconic sickle-shaped claw. In the movies, it's depicted as a lethal weapon used for slashing open prey, but the reality is a little less dramatic. Fossil evidence suggests that Velociraptor used its claw more like a grappling hook. Instead of slashing, it likely used the claw to pin down struggling prey while it delivered the killing blow with its teeth. Think of it as a hunter trapping its meal before digging in, rather than a ninja slicing and dicing everything in its path. Practical? Yes. Terrifying? Only if you were the prey. So why did Velociraptor have feathers if it couldn't fly? Well, feathers served several purposes. 
They might have been used for display, like modern birds showing off their plumage to attract mates or intimidate rivals. Feathers also provided insulation, helping Velociraptor regulate its body temperature in the harsh desert environment where it lived. And who knows? Maybe it flapped its feathered arms in an intimidating display to scare off predators or rivals. While it wasn't soaring through the skies, those feathers still played a crucial role in its survival. Velociraptor lived about 75 to 71 million years ago in what is now Mongolia. Its environment was harsh, an arid desert with limited water and vegetation. This tough landscape shaped Velociraptor into a resourceful predator. One of the most famous Velociraptor fossils ever discovered is locked in combat with a Protoceratops, a sheep-sized herbivore. The two dinosaurs were fossilized mid-battle, with the Velociraptor's claw embedded in the Protoceratops' neck. This fossil, known as the Fighting Dinosaurs, gives us a rare glimpse into how Velociraptor hunted and fought. But even in this iconic scene, it's clear that Velociraptor wasn't invincible. The Protoceratops likely dealt a fatal blow to the raptor before succumbing to its injuries. It's a reminder that Velociraptor's world was brutal, and survival was never guaranteed. So, how did we get it so wrong? Why do we think of Velociraptor as a human-sized monster instead of a feathery little predator? The answer lies in Hollywood and paleontology's evolving understanding of dinosaurs. When Jurassic Park was made, the producers actually based their raptors on a different dinosaur, Deinonychus. Deinonychus was much larger and more in line with the movie's depiction. But Velociraptor sounded cooler, so they went with the name, and the rest is history. Meanwhile, paleontologists have made incredible discoveries over the past few decades, revealing that many dinosaurs were feathered, and that Velociraptor was smaller than we once thought. These findings have completely transformed our understanding of these creatures. Velociraptor's transformation from terrifying predator to scrappy underdog doesn't make it any less fascinating. In fact, its real-life story is even more compelling. It wasn't the apex predator of its time, but it was a survivor, smart, agile, and perfectly adapted to its environment. So next time you hear the name Velociraptor, don't just think of the Hollywood monster. Think of the feathered little hunter that prowled the deserts of Mongolia, using its wits and claws to carve out a place in a brutal world. It may not have been the nightmare we imagined, but it was still a remarkable creature, proving that sometimes the truth is just as fascinating as fiction.